Hello friends, welcome to Faith and Grace Life. And this is where we share the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, His goodness and His undeserved, unmerited favor that Christ has brought for us to enjoy. Each time we talk about the cross of Calvary, especially when we celebrate the Passion Week, the Good Friday, the Easter Monday, Easter Sunday, the picture religion and tradition are painted in our hearts is the pain and the suffering of Christ alone. Unfortunately, we do not so much emphasize the purpose of the pain and suffering. And I've come to announce to you, folks, that the purpose is even greater than the pain and suffering. The purpose of the suffering and the pain Christ went through is the love of God for you and for me. The love of God for you and for me. And that is the center of my message for you today. The, I titled this message, The Love of Christ. The Love of Christ. Father, please speak through my mind and use my vocal cord as your megaphone to announce your love to the whole world. Let there be no ambiguity in this world, but let it be sharper than any two-edged sword. Let your love be poured into every heart that hears this word to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. The love of Christ is the message I'm bringing to you today. There are other types of love in the Bible. We have the romantic love or sexual love. We have the family love. We have the brotherly love. And we have the God's kind of divine love. The God's divine love. This type of love that God displays is called agape in Greek language. We say Greek language because that's the Bible language. The Bible is written, especially the New Testament is written in the Greek. And this kind of love refers to a sacrificial, benevolent, and charitable love that seeks the best for the loved one. Hallelujah. The love of God for the whole world was consummated in Christ at the cross of Calvary. That is Christ's death on the cross of Calvary is the full demonstration of his love for the whole world. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, a very popular scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I will take it in the New Living Translation. It said, for this is how God loved him. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Verse 18 says, There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Another scripture says in the book of Romans, it says, For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, perhaps for a good man, someone will even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So you can see, on the cross of Calvary, God demonstrates his love towards us. Who are the us? That is everyone in the whole world. So the word of God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. People look at the cross of Calvary and only sees the pain there. Only sees the suffering there. Oh yes, there is suffering, there is pain, but there is something greater than suffering and pain. And that is the love of God towards the whole world. Hallelujah. 
And I want us to look at the prayer of Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians because God wants us to be rooted and be grounded in love. In chapter 3 of the book of Ephesians, from verse 14, the Bible says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and you keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand. This is the key verse I want us to look at. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should. How wide, how long, how deep, and how high the love of God is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. So you can see here in Apostle Paul talks of the love of Christ. In fact, the message translation describes this love as extravagant. In the, in the um, message translation, it says, My response is to get down on my knees before the Father. This magnificent Father who passes out all heaven and earth. I ask him to strengthen you by his spirit. Not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength. That Christ will live in you as you open your door and invite him in. And I ask him with both feet, planted, firmly in love, you'll be able to take him with all followers of Jesus, the extravagant dimension of Christ's love. Our hallelujah. Reach out and experience the breath. Text is length. Plum is depth. Rise to the heights. Hallelujah. Live full lives. Full in the fullness of God. When you are rooted and grounded in the love of Christ, I am telling you, you enjoy the fullness of God. Many Christians, many of us, we are not enjoying the fullness of God because we are not walking in the love of Christ. From this passage, we can see that the love of Christ has four dimensions. One, it has width. Number two, it has length. Number three, it has height. And number four, it has depth. That is, the love of Christ is very wide, is very long, is very high, and is very deep. Four dimensions of Christ's love. Great. And by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit wants us to really have a grasp of this four dimension of Christ's love. Now, let's look at it one by one. How wide is the love of Christ? I want to answer this way. It is as wide as the old world. Christ died for the old world. The Bible says, For God so loved the old world that he gave his only begotten son. It's as wide as the old world. Christ suffered and died for everybody. Christians and non-Christians. Black, white and colored. Jews and Gentiles. Slaves and those that are free. All races, all tribes, all nations, from east to west, north to south. That is how wide the love of Christ is. You don't have to be worthy to deserve this love. He just died. It is Christ's extravagant love for you and for me. The word of God says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for us ungodly before we give our life to christ the bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god 
But God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now let's look at how long the love of Christ is. How long is the love of Christ? Now, this love is eternal. It covers our eternity past. It covers our present. And it covers our future. This law began before the foundation of the world, and it is forever. Even when you play the prodigal, the love is still there for you. His loving arms are ever constantly stretched out to receive his lost sheep back. Hallelujah. The Bible says, even before the, he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without faults in his eyes hallelujah in john chapter 6 verse 37 christ says those the father has given me will come to me and i will never reject them and i want to speak this word into your life that you are looking at me if you have not given your life to christ i know you will come to jesus and jesus will never reject you because of his love is eternal now, this aspect of his love is also the manifestation of his long suffering towards us. He's patiently waiting for us to open the doors of our hearts to come in and lavish his extravagant love on us. He says in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, and open the door and will come into him and dine with him and he with me hallelujah let me just ask you this simple question have you benefited from this extravagant love of christ at all have you tasted and seen that the lord is good if not what are you waiting for make him your lord and your savior and you automatically become partaker of this extravagant grace that the love of Christ has brought to us. If you are ready, I want you to simply say this simple prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Please forgive me. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Now help me to live for you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Brothers and sisters, in the second part of this message, we'll be looking at the remaining dimensions of Christ's love. That is, the depth and the height of his love for you and me. Till I come your way next time, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Hallelujah.